Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Tom Spark. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about top 10 red flags to watch out for when it comes to searching for a VPN provider to give them your money. If you guys are wondering which VPNs I recommend, check out VPNTailors.com. I'll also be putting some links in the description down below. I recommend an A-tier VPN right now. Nord, Surf, and High Debt Me are all excellent options. If you click on these links on this website, it will get you free months and a discount. And if you click on the numbers, it will actually take you to individual reviews. I've reviewed every VPN out there pretty much over the years. So go ahead and check that out if you're looking for a VPN. Now let's get back to the video. Let's get real. The VPN industry is kind of like the Wild West. It's full of shady characters, empty promises, and there's more red flags than a soccer referee convention. As someone who's been in the VPN trenches for years now, I've seen it all. I've been ghosted, lied to, and let down more times than I care to admit. So take it from me, you need to watch out for these red flags before you even think about committing to a VPN. Now I'm here to help you avoid the pitfalls, the BS, and the sketchy players that are trying to take your money and run. Number one, red flag to watch out for, cutting affiliates out. The thanks for the help, now get lost move. Let's kick things off with a red flag that hits very close to home because well, it happened to me. Picture this. You're an affiliate who's been singing a VPN's praises for years, driving them traffic and filling their coffers. Then one day, out of the blue, they ghost you harder than that Tinder date who said they were just really busy. No warning, no explanation, just a big fat block and a pile of unpaid commissions. Welcome to the world of VPN affiliate programs where loyalty is a one-way street. Why does this matter to you as a viewer though, right? This is just my career and everything like that built on partnerships that always kind of end up screwed for better or worse. Well, look at the example of WeVPN. I was telling people that they weren't paying my affiliate commissions and then four months later, the company actually ended up closing. Yikes, worst case scenario, right? But overall, when a VPN starts cutting affiliates out, sometimes it can be a sign that something is rotten in the company. Affiliates at the end of the day are watchdogs of the industry. We keep these companies in check, call them out on their BS, and push them to do better by making reviews. If they're cutting ties with affiliates, they're likely trying to dodge accountability or save a few bucks by stiffing people who helped build their brand. It's never really a good sign when this happens. Pro tip, before you buy a VPN provider, do a quick search on how they treat their affiliates and partners. If you see reports of shady behavior, run the other way. And if you're an affiliate like me, protect your neck and work with companies that value long-term relationships, not quick cash grabs. Second red flag, slow development updates. The we'll get to it eventually approach. Have you ever been stuck with a VPN waiting for an update that feels like it's never coming? Yeah, me too. And let me tell you, there's nothing more frustrating than a VPN saying it's going to update something and it never does. We're living in a world where cyber threats and privacy and security are constant threat, so you really need a VPN that stays up to date. A VPN that doesn't prioritize regular updates is like a car with no brakes, dangerous and not something you really want to rely on. Slow updates, maybe the company is either underfunded, understaffed, has a slow development team, or it's just kind of uninterested in keeping up with meaningful updates. Either way, I do think it's a bad, big red flag. If their last update was slow, if there's slower updates than you, um, maybe like one or two every month, that kind of could be a red flag. Additionally, if there's features they've been promising for a long time and failed to deliver on, that's also a red flag. So if your VPN still doesn't have split tunneling, uh, maybe something like multi-hop, Apple TV compatibility, it's missing some kind of application that said it was going to implement, um, things like that. Um, some of these cool little nifty features could be a red flag that your VPN is kind of underselling you um, and not really keeping up with the times. Look for a VPN instead that's innovating. Is it making new products? For example, NordVPN has a password manager, drive support, mesh networking that lets you remote into your VPN at home. Surfshark VPN, for example, has Incogni, it has antivirus built into the VPN application, six or seven other extraneous privacy features that can be useful for your use case, has even a burner phone number, add-on that's only around $3 a month. These are the VPNs that are innovating, developing new features, and this is the kind of stuff you want to look for, not VPNs that just are still, you know, connect to a server. That's pretty much it. You know, 
does your VPN have a Linux UI? Does it have, you know, all the latest apps? These are the kind of things you really do want. Another red flag for your VPN could be lack of community interest. If you go to your VPNs, um, Reddit, Twitter, uh, maybe some other communities out there, if there isn't that much activity, it could mean that the VPN kind of doesn't have as much of a um, following maybe it's kind of dying out maybe it's trend looks something like that more than something like this generally more activity in forums is good it's indicative of an active community active bug bounty program things like that you know you could even check the history of the bug bounty program to see how active it is community interest is a good indicative factor of how popular a VPN is how updated it is how interactive the VPN is with its community. You know, the people who work there, are they talking to the people in the community? These are all hallmarks of a good VPN provider, but if your VPN, for example, has had their Reddit closed down for a long time, the forums are kind of dead, stuff like this is kind of a red flag, I think. Another red flag to look out for is toxic elite um, communities that use kind of elita elitism and gatekeeping and stuff like that. Now, I haven't really seen this more than any VPN with something like Winscribe. This is like the hallmark example of something like this. Um, they tell you if you're using any other VPN besides Winscribe, it's a honeypot basically. Um, there's, you know, if you mention any other VPN, people will call you a shill. Um, this kind of stuff is generally a marker of insecurity. VPNs, at the end of the day, we're all trying to use them to protect our privacy and security. And VPNs that are fighting other VPNs more than just trying to develop cool things, I think is kind of a red flag. Kind of means that the toxic culture of the company is more interested in protecting its ego than actually improving its product offerings. It also means they could not be listening to user feedback, which is crucial for any service that wants to stay relevant and secure. At the end of the day, we're paying these companies with our money. It's not just some fan club, right? Another red flag is not having audits, bug bounties, or transparency reports, or maybe even all of these things. Having a VPN that seems to value its transparency and various things like this is very important. Um, you wanna make sure it has a bug bounty program that's active. You wanna make sure that there's been um, audits to show the company is doing what it says it's doing uh, maybe even transparency reports maybe even in a full landing page like this showing everything that it's doing to show that it really does value its privacy and security offerings another red flag is slow customer support if you send in a ticket and you don't get a reply for days later this could be indicative of the company just not having that much staffing and stuff like that so definitely kind of consider this as well these red flags with VPNs are more common than you think. Definitely consider all of these before choosing your VPN provider. Make sure to stay up to date with the VPN tier list.com. I've rated all these VPNs with various different metrics and categories on the website. And you can always see my transparent ratings and scores right here by clicking on this here button. And it will take you right here to see all these different things. So thanks for checking out this video, guys. And I'll see you again very soon.